I'd put Tracer right in the bin. Like, if I was to go to random people and say, I'm a Tracer, I'd think you'd, like, really good at sketching stuff on pieces of paper, wouldn't they? Like, that's not parkour. <laughs> yeah. I will just sit here for an hour. <laughs> Alright, so now just, uh, yeah. Take a card. What makes you different? I think to, to do a parkour, um, I spend probably more time in the gym than most and try and do more work to make my body stronger so that I'm able to do parkour better. Um, I also think that I have really good, um, yeah, I think I have really good stamina when it comes to training like throughout full days and I really enjoy training with people all day. So yeah, I think having strong stamina and like a strong body to be able to take impact, that probably makes, makes me most different to others. Do you consider yourself to be a professional at what you do? Yeah, yeah, I think um, I definitely consider myself to be a professional. I go into parkour with a professional mindset as well. So even if I'm not making the most money out of parkour, I still want to work hard at it so it does become a like proper sustainable profession, especially while I'm so young. I think committing myself now fully to it is the best way to go. I don't think going like half assed into it is gonna get me anywhere. So training as much as I can, as well as stretching and conditioning and um, like studying videos and stuff like that and then trying to expand my horizons as well so not only actually doing parkour but lifting and then going for runs and like meeting other people that are in different environments I think that's what's going to help me become more professional in the parkour environment Favourite parkour athlete and why? I think my favourite parkour athlete to train with is probably Tim Champion I really enjoy training with him because although we don't have the same style, um, his like understanding of flips and stuff like that is like so advanced that he can help me out on most like flip precisions or any other sort of twisting stuff. To watch, there's so many. I mean, anything that Don puts out is pretty mental. George McGowan, Travis is obviously sick. Yana Shower is actually a god, like it's actually insane. Oh, but then <laughs> there's um, Cosman as well, who's an actual, no, I reckon Yana Shower. Like I watched his videos so much. Oh, but there's, there's Matthias Meyer as well. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what do you regret and why? Oh, when I was in sec uh, primary school, I was leaving the primary school and my mum told me not to climb over the fence with my friend and I climbed over the fence with my friend and the head teacher caught us and I was so gutted, I was crying, I was well upset and we had to write a letter to my head teacher to say I'm sorry I won't climb the fence again. That's my regret. <laughs> I had to think about that the other day and I was like that is probably the thing I regret the most, climbing over that fence. Because I was told not to do it and I did it anyway. And then I was so upset <laughs> when I got caught. <laughs> yeah, that's what I regret. Stuck with me though, I don't climb fences. Oh, I do climb, climb fences for a living now. <laughs> <laughs> what are your aspirations for your career in parkour? So on a like basic level, I would like to just for it to be a sustainable living for me, to get a sponsorship that's like pays a decent amount so that I can just full-time commit into parkour. But then more into the future, I'd really like to own a gym um, and be able to get the next generation in. And from there, just like watch people grow and get like better and better at parkour, like thanks to that gym being there. I've obviously got like street sessions as well, which is like an event thing that I'm working on at the moment, which I'm super excited to kind of expand and grow. Um, so yeah, I think just a lot of growth. Above all, I want to be the best athlete I can be. Like I want to be um, like doing parkour for years and years and years and be like well known kind of for doing parkour for years. I'd also like to be able to squat 200 kilos. So maybe that as well. <laughs> oh, and deadlift 250.
That's that's more closer things, but that's not really parkour. Are you happy? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I sometimes ask myself this, like, am I happy doing just solely parkour? Am I happy, like, kind of winging it? But I think at, the, at, this, at this stage in my life, like, and I'm, I'm only 24 as well, like, yes, that's what I want to be doing. That's what I want to pursue. And uh, if I'm not happy doing it now, then I, I shouldn't be doing it at all. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy doing parkour and I'm happy to see where, I, where it leads me. Who are your biggest inspirations outside of parkour? I think I'd be I'd be foolish not to say like my parents like they gave me a fantastic upbringing, um, me and my sister, um, and I think to be able to do that for like a future child of mine would just be amazing. To be able to feel like safe in what they want to do, but also have like the drive and determination to go and do that. More sport related people, I really like a guy called Ross Edgley. He's like just a, a really strong guy, but has done some like incredible challenges. Um, there's a guy called Nims who recently, I don't know if you've watched the documentary, he went and climbed 14 peaks, 14 high, highest peaks in like six months or whatever. It was like something silly. I think just people that are amazing at what they do and have like gone really far with it. And I think with uh, Ross Edgley as well, he's like, like he's a big guy, but can like, he, he ran a marathon pulling a mini. He climbed a rope the same size as Everest, but he's a big guy. So like, it's really cool to see someone like that looks like a bodybuilder swim around the UK. I think I find that really inspiring. Like, especially in parkour, like I want to be strong as well, but I want to be able to do all these other things. And I think he's a really good athlete at like crossing the, cross, crossing those sort of barriers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The hardest battle you faced in parkour. Doing the half Hara on the night shoot of light work, that was pretty difficult. Especially because I went there maybe a month or so before and like saw it on this like corner of a roof. So a half Hara is like a cartwheel, miss your feet and then go into another cartwheel. And I was just on this roof and I was like, imagine if that's possible. And then I went to the gym, did it in the gym, and I was like, oh, this is definitely a thing. And then went back like a month later to try and shoot it and couldn't do it on the first day at all. And yeah, I spent like a, maybe like an hour, an hour and a half just like prepping it this first night and just couldn't make myself do it. And then, yeah, the next night did it within 10 minutes, like had the mental capacity there just to send it on that day and not the other. But that was a pretty difficult battle. Do you think you have balance in your life? Probably not at the moment. I think I have a lot of effort going into becoming a parkour athlete. I think maybe I should probably put a little bit more time into the other stuff, but that's not what I want to do at the moment. I want to become a successful parkour athlete. So I think balance from a, an outsider looking in is quite a lot. Like it looks like I'm putting all my eggs in one basket, but that is what I want to do at the moment. But like when it comes to like spending time with family and friends and like girlfriend and stuff like that, like, yeah, I do think I have balance in that. I think I, I try and make time to do as much as I can, but there everyone knows that my main focus is to become like one of the best at what I do. So they all kind of respect that sometimes I've just, I've got to go and train or I've got to go to the gym or I've just got to go and do that run or something like that. Um, but yeah, I find it important to make sure that like everyone's around me kind of feels value. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to neglect friendships or relationships or stuff like that. But I need to make it clear that this is kind of what I want to do. <laughs> Last one. Ah, oh, an age-old classic: tracer, free runner, or parkourist. I'm gonna throw parkour into the mix. No, I'm not. Um, I go with free runner. Uh, easier to say, and then I'd go parkourist. And then I'd put Tracer right in the bin because I don't know where that's gone from and that doesn't belong. I know Callum's big on parkourist, but I find what I do, I know there's a whole like parkour and free running divide or whatever, but it just doesn't exist anymore. But I find it easier to call myself a free runner because I do mainly more flips than I do sort of parkour based movements. So I say free runner, but I'd happily go with parkour. Would I happily go with parkourist? Sounds weird saying it, doesn't it? Um, yeah, I'd go with parkourist. I, I don't really like tracer because no one knows what that means. Like, if I was to go to random people and say, 
I'm a tracer. I think you'd like really good at sketching stuff on pieces of paper, wouldn't they? Like, that's not parkour. Yeah, three and a. That's your ten. Get in. Yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs>